Reverend Bravo presents. Oh, there is a fountain. Who is the king? His name is Jesus. Oh, yeah. Hope for the nations. You may be at the breaking point of your life. God will never allow you to have a breakdown. There is hope in Christ. Communicating divine truth with an accent of love. Bringing hope to our generation. Impacting men with the spirit of excellence. Bringing divine healing to the whole man. Teaching all nations the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Matthew, it says, If any of you shall believe, nothing shall be impossible to him. In a sense, God wants us to recognize that faith transcends facts. You see, there are certain grace that are bound, and there are certain grace that minimizes. Somebody has a grace of 10,000 naira. And it's able to abound more than a person who has a grace of one million. And when the Bible is talking about this grace abounding, it means that you will have sufficiency in all locations. Paul was talking about all kinds of problems about his life, and God told him, My grace is sufficient for you. I want to encourage you this time to trust God. Two days ago, the Lord woke me up in the morning. And that is the greatest revolution I've ever had for a long time to come. I've never had that kind of revolution. He said, Gregory, I want to tell you two channels in which you will get things in this life. He said, the first channel is confessing the word, believing the word, reading the word regularly, the power of positive thinking, proclaiming. Yes, it works. He said, the other channel operates through God, just looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. And then God intervenes in a miracle. Let me give you a very simple example. You have fear. Yes, you can read the word of God. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. I shall not be afraid. I keep on confessing and confessing. But somehow you can raise up to God and say, Father, take away my fear. Instantaneously, fear goes off. You can be looking for money and say, God, I believe you. My God shall supply my needs. And they'll say, Lord, I need an intervention financially. And immediately it happened. I can tell you I've seen several of these miracles. So many of them to, not to count. From small to big things. And I've come to accept the fact that this Christianity is not a gimmick. That this God is a powerful God. And that God is able to make all grace abound. That in every situation of your life, you will have sufficient. You will not lack. Because God is able to make all grace abound to you. Can you tap in on that grace? Can you stretch your hands to that grace? Can you look forward to that grace? When the Rice brothers talked about the discovery of the airplane, as they were sharing their thoughts to their father, the bishop came in and said, Oh, young children, it is not going to happen in this age that men will fly in the air. Because when that happens, then the second coming is near. And then one person concluded that even though the bishop and the Wright brothers were living in the same house, they were sharing different horizons. Yes, we all live in Ife, you all live in Lagos, you all live in Kaduna, you all live in Portacot, you all live in America. But even you, the Bible says the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. The righteous will not take the script from his neighbor to plan his life. The righteous will not look at the country's 
financial situation to plan his life. The righteous can have sufficiency always. You find that in the case of the Egyptian, there was darkness in the land of Egypt, but there was what? Light in the land of Even in the same nation. God is able to make all grace abound. All grace abound. Multiplication abound to you. Why? Because you are operating on the grace that goes beyond psychology, that goes beyond mental confession, but you are looking unto Jesus as the God of miracles. Instantaneous miracles. Instantaneous intervention. Again, I want us to recognize that God is able to give us grace that supersedes our sin. Romans 5.20 tells us, where sin abounded, grace, grace much more abounds. One scripture says, grace did much more. The New English Bible says, where sin was thus multiplied, grace immeasurably exceeded it. One says, where sin were multiplied, the loving kindness of God was lavished the more. One says, where sin abounded, the gift of growth has overflowed beyond it. What our scripture says, where the sin abounded, the favor greatly super abundant. One says, when grace, when sin abound, the grace of God superseded it. I want us to recognize that God is able to give us grace that will cleanse us from every sin. Paul said that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from an evil conscience. Maybe some of us who feel I've done something evil, I've killed someone, I've done something terrible, God can never accept me. But the Bible says God is able to give you grace that supersedes your sin. God is able to give us grace that cancels the debt you have paid. Forgive us our sin as we forgive them or forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. God is able to give you a grace that covers your sin. The Bible says that love, the abundant love Jesus has covers what? A multitude of sin. Again, I want to say that God is able to give us grace that we can now go in confidence to reach God. Boldly to reach God. I don't know how a man can be a child of God who cannot fellowship with God. Who cannot have relationship with God. Whose relationship to God is very intermediary. Just last two days ago, three days ago, one of the church members asked me, what other thing do you want God to do? I think the person is familiar with the kind of things God has been doing for me and the way my life has been going for a few and they have been seeing all kinds of spectacular miracles. And they asked me, what else do you want God to do for you? I said, there's only one more thing I need for God. That I am dwell in the presence of the Lord all the days of my life. That's what I want to enjoy. I want to be able to be in the throne and the presence of God and stay there for hours and hours and hours. Now I said the second thing is for God to get me like-minded people who we can share God together and enjoy God together. And I said that in those days when I was a young Christian, whenever I saw another Christian, we share scriptures. We read the Bible. We dig deep. But now people share all kinds of things. The deep does not call to the deep. We don't mind edify one another. You complain of school, complain of war, complain of school, complain of Jonathan, complain of banking, everything complain. God is able to give us grace to confront our sin. You see, God is not going to cover your sin. God is not going to cancel your sin. God is not going to cleanse you from all unrighteousness until you confront your sin. 
You see, the problem about people who don't confront their sin is that one day their sin will confront them. The Bible says that though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not go what unpunished. And then Paul asks another question in Romans 6 1. Shall we persist in sin that grace may abound? Shall we persist in sin? As somebody said, can we continue to sin so that we can exploit grace? Can we continue to sin so that we can exploit grace? He said, God forbid. You see, one thing about communicating with God, one thing about constantly being in the presence of God, is that you are always having a repentant heart. A heart of a little child. A heart that is always saying, Lord, search me, O God, and try my heart. And see if there is any evil thing in me. And bring me to their way everlasting. The power to confront our sin. I gave you an example some time ago that anytime I speak rudely to someone, anytime I bear grudge against someone, somehow the Spirit of God will speak to me in my conscience and tell me, This is wrong. Don't do that. Don't say this. Don't open your mouth to say this kind of thing. And that's sometimes I won't find it very difficult to speak again because I don't want to say anything that would grieve the Holy Ghost. Anything that would grieve the Holy Ghost, I wouldn't want to do it. I want to suffer abuse. I want, to, I want people to, to do evil things to me, to shout at me, to abuse me, but I don't want to do it back to them. Because if they do it to me, the grace of God is poured upon the abuse. But if I do it to them, the grieving of the Spirit is in my conscience. I so keep on with the evil you are doing and it turns to my good and if I do the evil I get bad the power to confront your sin the power to confront your sin papers have a story of one man who had survived almost a billion dollar a night or so put into his account a little young boy who was in need of money but this boy did not think twice he returned that money back. That little act has brought him into the limelight that his, his church gave him a brand new car. Nobody ever gets rich by living a life of sin. Grace gives us the power to confront our sin. Jesus says God is able to save to the uttermost they that come to him through Christ. Completely, completely. Completely saved to the uttermost. Days that come to him through Christ. White lie, gray lie, yellow lie, all is lie. Diplomacy that hides the truth is lies. Trying to get people's heart through cunning means is evil. Trying to pretend hypocrisy you say something good to somebody's face and behind you say something bad the bible says you are a danger but grace gives you the power to confront your sin again i want to say that grace gives us the power to receive succor when we are tempted paul was saying that we have a high priest that has passed to the heavens jesus who was in every means tempted as we are now we can use the word tempted in many diverse ways we can use the word tempted to mean tested trials but without sin and then having been tempted and tested and tried without sin he is able to sympathize the word there sympathize can also be developed to mean the word empathize that is able to feel your situation you see when we say that god is able to succor you we mean that god can take care of you god knows the pains you are going through god knows the difficulty you are facing god knows how things are not working in your life this young man who was telling me he wants to divorce his wife we are two different people i'm going to divorce i said don't you know that God saw you right and gave you somebody who is different from you to make you complete? That all over the world, opposite attracts. 
And there's no way there can be motion except there's no friction. What is the cross? One going against another. What is day? Light and what? Darkness. Is it not? Two opposites what? Attract. God is able to succor you. He's able. And so you don't need to look for a tranquilizing drug. You don't need to, uh, you, uh, if all through my Christian life, all through my life, I've not been tempted to take a particular drug to sleep. Because he giveth his beloved sleep. And what scripture said, he giveth his beloved in his sleep. But you see, as I bring my sermon to a conclusion, God has given us a blank check. As Philippians 4.19 says, says, My God shall supply. I want to encourage you to start believing God. I want to encourage you to start believing that God can do big things. Nobody's big enough to make you rich. Nobody's big enough to enslave your conscience. Nobody's big enough to make you a stooge. That was the first decision I made. The second one is, which I say to myself over and over and over again, that apart from no slaving, I am going to trust God for every bit of my life, from the smallest to the biggest. Sometimes I'm doing a project. I was just discussing one of my project directors some time ago, a project I started some few months ago, and I said, can you see that this project is completed? We are all shocked. How did it all happen? Simply because I'm going to trust God for every block. I'm going to trust God for every sand. I'm going to trust God for every granite. I will not budget my life with your salary. Or budget my life with one uncle or cousin. That uncle or cousin, does he have a two head before my head? Today a person is up, tomorrow is down. The Bible says, Cost is the man that trusted the man. Cost. So, my friend, if you are going to have the grace of God today, you must turn to God. Turn to God. It's easy to say, but I'm telling you, it may be difficult turning to God. Because there are many people who want us to turn to them. But turn to God. Turn to God. I have friends who have some bit of money, very intimate friends, and they can tell you. And my wife knows about it. I've never gone to meet any of them and say, please, just give me something. Turn to God. Turn to God. Turn to God. Ezekiah faced the wall and turned to God. So I say, well, God, God uses people. Yes, he uses people, but it is God that uses them. Not you that use them. Say so you need connection to survive. You don't need connection. You need one connection, and that is God, for which everybody connects. Do you know that if anybody stands against you, and God wants you in that place, God can take him off. Then learn to trust God. Put him to the test. Say, God, you can do it for me. Lord, I trust you. Oh, you see, my, your goods have been plundered. I gave an example one time, some time ago, some years back. Thieves came to our, our house and took everything in that house. And I was grumbling and grumbling. Lord said, Lord said, what model of television did they take? What model of video did they take? He said, you are past that stage. That year, the Lord opened an opportunity for me. I found myself in New York, Manhattan City. And Lord said, look, take, write all the things that I've taken from your house. One, one, I calculated them all. And I found out the money the Lord gave me superseded it. Trust God, my friend. Trust him. Don't keep on dwelling on the old. All things are passed away. All things have become what? New. God doesn't put all new anointing into old bottles. 
Don't give, don't, don't give all, a new miracle into old containers. God is a God of newness. God is a God of newness. I've come to appreciate that the whole thing called poverty and wealth has nothing to do with God but in our minds. Simple. In the way we think. Then tarry until the harvest. When you have turned to God, when you have put God to the trust, then tarry. You see, the days of tarry may be tough. The days of waiting on God may be tough. Oh, my brother, my child is not doing well. Look at everybody is doing well. Oh, I've not got a job. Everybody's getting a job. Please, it may be long, but keep tarrying. Just keep waiting because the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall do what? They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. You see, those who seem to have overtaken you in life, one day I was talking to a young man, he said, look, my records are so bad. In school, my school set was bad. When I was in the university, I did a very bad, had a bad result. Postgraduate, I just managed. All things I bad. I said, well, I believe in breaking records. You have third class, break the record to 2-1. You have 2-1, break the record to first class. I said, those who already have first class, they don't have any record to break, but you still have something to break. And I said, life is not in counting the past we, have, we are. But the future that still lies ahead of us. And I'm telling you, what still lies ahead of you is much more than what is past. So I was like, I know that man. I don't know. Yeah, I knew him in school. How ah, can that man be the, 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 the big man that he is? Tell them. Tell them that John F. Kennedy graduated last in his class. And through his father's influence, went to Harvard. Tell them. That Albert Einstein was among the last three in his class. Tell them that Roosevelt was sent out of the school because he wouldn't cope. And after he was sent out of the school, he got polio. Then he contested for American president, and all the papers never said that, said that he would never even win the, 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 the Democratic um, uh, what it called, ticket. He won the first time. The second time, they said he can never have a, a second term. He won the second term. He go for, he went for the third time. He said, "Cannot get." He won the third term, and then he said, "Cannot." He now won the fourth term. That was after him that the constitution was changed. That no more will be elected more than twice. <laughs> Tell them. Tell them that Oprah, that the very first time that Oprah did her audition, they told her, "You are too ugly for the soapbox." Too ugly. Who would, who would look at you? And tell them that today Oprah is one of the richest women in the world. Tell them. Tell them that the one great sopranos, when she went to go and meet the man to take him, he said, first of all, you are too short. Two, you are too ugly. Three, your voice is too cracky. And then she left there and was determined, just as I told you yesterday, ego strengthening. She was determined. To break records. Tell somebody that we break records. Records are for broke, to have been broken. Yes, you have. You, yes, you, you have 30 over 100. Yes, break the record and go to 45. Then break the record and go to 55. I want to make you realize how our life will be can never be predicted on how our past was. You see, why is that so? Because the path of the righteous is an ever increasing glory. Young lady who was leading the church this morning read that same scripture in, in, in Proverbs, in which he said, The path of the righteous is an ever increasing glory until the dawn. And that's what I found out. The righteous may come poor, but he keeps on increasing glory, and the Bible says he becomes rich. The, right, the righteous may be an intellectual dwarf, but he keeps on growing and becomes an intellectual giant. As a young student in a dog college, we invited the let Archbishop Idaosa to speak to us. And let Archbishop Idaosa said, way before I knew Christ, I couldn't think. My brain was porous. 
But then when the Holy Ghost came upon me, he quickened me. Don't let anybody tell you the way I look at you, you are not a mechanical engineer, mechanical engineer, what do you call it? Material. The way I see you can never be an economics material. The way you look, you can never be a doctor. Who has told him to look? <laughs> you see, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Nobody knows your secret. So when you are challenged by the circumstances of life, when you are challenged by the problems you face here and there, don't just keep digging for who will help you. Take the vow I have made that God is able. That God is able. I mean that God is able. There are people in this church that have written checks of 400,000 and given that as a gift. Checks of 500, some 900. You look at them, they're ordinary people. Because they don't want to stay, they don't want to stay on the level of 10,000, 5,000, 2, 5, 1, 5. <laughs> the moment you start writing a check of a million, you become what? Can we pray? I want us to thank the Lord for opening the door for us this morning and for the grace he has poured upon us. The question is that God is able to make all grace abound. Those of you who are watching me on television, I want you to believe with me that God is able. Yes, whatsoever we are going to have this month, God is able to make grace multiplied for you. God is going to make the grace multiplied for you. Just stretch your hands to God. Stretch your faith to God. If you are watching me on television, you don't know Jesus Christ. You've not come to the knowledge of the truth, you can do it now. All you need to do is to say, Jesus, I'm sorry. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. And the moment you do it, you will experience a change. A reality change. You will become born again. Born again. Born again. God is able. Can all of us say, Seven times God is ever able. One go. Now rise up and walk and say it three times, shouting that God is able. God is able. That you have watched this program. I know that God has touched you because every time I bring the word of God, you are always in my mind. Let me say to you that it is your prayerful support and your financial support that gets this program to people around the world. I want to count on that support from time to time. Please dial the numbers on the screen and call us and if possible send us an email. We know that God through you can reach out to all men in all generations. I want to say that in spite of all the problems and difficulties that are outside of you, don't lose heart. Christ in you is the hope of glory. You are a victor every time.